Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I got another good one teed up for you today. I have just the best guests. I am so thankful for our guests. You, the listeners of this show, whether you're listening or watching, whatever platform you're on, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a second of Harmonious at Lunch. We always talk about the three-legged stool of business on that show, on this show. That is the business, Harmonious, the architecture, right? That every business needs the 10 fundamental disciplines you need to know and master in order to scale. But what are the other two legs? Mind and body. Well, you can't grow a business if you as the leader are stuck and in your own way. And we're going to talk about that probably in depth today. So it's you have to remember that you need all three legs of the stool balanced. And we're here to do that with a very special guest. So let me welcome Lori onto the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Brandon. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Yeah, I am too. So this is this is going to be a fun conversation. We were talking before we started <laughs> here. I'm excited for this. I know you will be too as the listener. Um, but Lori, give us a sense of, of what you do uh, in the in the online world right now. Yeah, so I I am a mindset and leadership coach. So essentially, I teach business owners and professionals how to be successful and doing meaningful work while actually thriving in life without the overwhelm. So aka and overwhelm and love your business and life. <laughs> so that's the essence. And I really take a holistic approach. So for me, it's really about like reviving your mind, body and soul through like alignment, awareness and action. So that's the essence of what I currently do in this world. That's awesome. And of course, the flip side of that is most people's reality where they hate their job, their business and their life. So <laughs> yes, let's, exactly. let's we can't have that. that. <laughs> yes, we need a lot less of that in the world, don't we? Yes, we do. Now, I <laughs> I already love you. You are fantastic again from talking just quickly <laughs> backstage. Um, but you came from the corporate world, which is surprising because you're not a boring dud on this show. So <laughs> tell me, how did you how did you get here? You came from corporate, now you're this awesome mindset leadership coach and you're full of energy. What's your backstory? Yeah, well, I came from the life of hating my work and my life and everything it about is. it, right? <laughs> that is the key, right? We kind of do what we learned and came from. Yeah, I, I spent 20 years in the corporate world. And, you know, truth be told, like, I, I loved the experience I had. I had an amazing experience. And, yep, it was, like, super challenging. I feel like I got my MBA in, like, one year of being in marketing. Um, it was an amazing experience. I would not be who I am today without it. And I went through constant cycles of burnout. So it, it's crazy world, right? And it, and it really at one point kind of led me to this path. And I realized in corporate, I was in sales, marketing and leadership. What I really, really love my jam was helping people grow. Like my goal was to get my people to be my boss one day. So at some point, this kind of registered to me like, oh, it's the human that I'm most interested in in all of this work. And I've had enough of this burnout cycle. So I'm going to go figure out how to actually do this in a different way and like create work and life in a way that works for me that I truly love, um, that I actually can be happy and be healthy in. So that's where I came from. And that's really kind of how it transitioned um, into the work that I do now. Um, and a little fun side fact, um, I've been on a performing improv team for about the last six years here in Charlotte. And let me tell you, I have learned, I went in because I love performing. I grew up performing, did dance, did all the things that so was a performance outlet for me. But let me tell you, I have learned so much about life and actually how to run a business through improv. Crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. But I I wholeheartedly believe you. Now, my business partner, uh, Sean, for the listeners, you've yes. either met him or you've heard me mention him. Um, he is a, a recovering lawyer and a former stand-up comedian and did improv all the time. So I have oh, I have right. seen firsthand how these skills <laughs> translate to business, but I want to dive in and I want to get your story of of how that helps you in business and in life. Um, but real quick, I want to you said something really interesting that I want to tie back to the harmonious architecture and see how this resonates with you. So uh, for us, I mentioned these are the 10 key business disciplines that every business has present and needs to be aware of and master. The I for us is inspire. Traditionally, in the corporate world, that would be called leadership. 
So leadership truly is the essence of it is about inspiring a team to follow you. It's right. It's not leading by the out with the iron mm -hmm. fist. It's inspiring your people. The H is what you hit on. It stands for humans optimized in a meaningful environment. Home. Most mm -hmm. corporate employees and even most of the employees of our clients when they come to work with us experience some level of burnout. And I'm sure you've seen this yeah. time and time again. You said you experienced it yourself. I, I love how you're balancing these two disciplines in what you do now. Um, so just I wanted to highlight that I real quick. That. Now I want to dive into the improv side of things. So tell <laughs> Back up. What, what made you even <laughs> say improv? Like what corporate America improv? Oh, those things. Perfect. Yeah, I know, right? Well, first of all, I love that home. That's like really freaking amazing. You got to take that. Um, yeah. So I, I have always. So I, I always kind of call myself. I'm really like this free spirited girl dressed up in professional presence. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> like how I define myself. And in the corporate world, I honestly felt like I was living two lives. Like there was like this free spirited, like happy go lucky me. And like, and then when I got to work, it was like all on, like gain in, like I was really good at all the corporate competencies, like owned my professional presence. I didn't know what I was doing. You didn't know that because I covered it well. Right. And worked really hard, like did all the things. But I had this sense. And again, this was just like a mindset thing that I couldn't integrate the two. So I really felt like I was like living two lives, which hindsight, right? Part of why I felt so burnt out because I was not just bringing all of me and the authenticity of me like to work. Um, and it really took me coming out and then learning like, oh my God, now I'm a business owner. How the hell do I do that? Right. And then just recreating what I had learned in the corporate world and figuring out, oh, wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> So it really was this creation of like, how can I actually just tune inward and really take what is me, all of me, and align this and incorporate my business and my work and what I do in a way that works. And, and that is really what now has me feel whole. So improv was just, I think me, this like happy go lucky spirit apart. I love to perform. It's like, I think it's like it literally in my DNA. My grandma was like a, a dancer for the troops in World War II. It's integrated into my nervous system. So I was looking for an outlet and I'm always up for a challenge, right? I am always like challenging myself, like to grow further, to go farther. So I thought, holy cow, how do you get on stage with nothing prepared and then just like do it? And the very essence of that is what I actually so love about improv. I love the fact that I don't have to memorize a script kudos to the actors out there that have to memorize stuff because like uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that i can't plan right and improv has of course a structure and there's a whole process behind it um but the whole point of it is to not plan to come with an open like empty slate and be fully present so it it really like it started as an outlet a performance outlet for me and a challenge to help me grow and so much more has come out of it because of it. Yeah, that is so cool. I've I've never done formal improv on a stage, but secret for the listeners, this whole show is improv. There is no uh, script, right, no plan. We get yeah. I, I met Lori five minutes before I hit record. Like we're just <laughs> we're jamming out here. Life is improv, and that's that's yes. how she, I love that you have that attitude. Um, so yeah. then tell me. Um, I love the explanation and the why you got into it. What what was the spillover into real life, into business? And what did you learn from doing that along the way? Yeah. Okay. So there are there are really kind of five improv principles that I've really taken that I have now integrated into my life and into business. So the first one of that is the concept of yes and. So you've mm. probably heard of the concept, yes, end, right? So in yes, improv, and, and. <laughs> yes, you have, exactly, right? Because we're all improvers. That is so true in life all the time. So when we embrace that, right, in improv in a scene, the moment that you say no, you shut the scene down. There's nowhere, to, there's nowhere for it to move forward, right? You might as well just say scene and end it because you've just shut down the scene. The same thing happens in life and in your business, right? When we say like, no, but 
we're shutting off our opportunities, possibilities. So when we embrace the yes and, even if what we want is what somebody's offering us isn't what we want to do, we can say yes and in this time frame or in this way. So we're keeping the door open. And what it does to our brain, it keeps us in that mindset of staying open to look for opportunities, to look for possibilities, to look for possible partnerships you wouldn't have seen if you were just, nope, this is my business and this is my model. This is how I do it. And nothing, there's no other way, right? So that's the yes and concept in business. It keeps you open to possibility and it allows you to continue to be creative. Mm. I completely disagree with everything you just said. You see how that shuts down a conversation? Yes. There, enough said on yes and. Like, do that. Done. This interview's <laughs> over. We're okay. done. Stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of yes and. It's a um, very, very powerful tactic. When, uh, again, yeah. that's working with clients, uh, your team, your leadership, whatever it is, yeah. it's, it's a universal principle. And I, I love that that's the first Everything. thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing is to be a good listener, right? And we, and we know this, we know this in theory, right? We all know like, oh yes, I should be present and listen, but let's be real. How often are we actually fully present and listening, right? Like AKA almost never, like we're always distracted or in our brain, we're thinking about how we're gonna respond, therefore we're not listening, right? Or we're like going through a laundry list of to-dos or I gotta stop at the grocery store, like we're just not present. So. In the world of improv, if you are not present and fully listening, you are missing the gifts that your scene partner is giving you. And when you are listening, you're giving each other everything you need in order to create the scene and let it evolve. And that's when it gets so entertaining. And it's usually then when you get full in right? That things go in crazy directions you would never, you could never imagine. But you're, you're listening for those little nuggets, those little golden nuggets. And the moment you stop listening is when you miss it. And you just miss the opportunity, right? So we know that in business and in life, like with our customers, with our clients, right? When we're really fully present, there's so much gold there that they're teaching you what's missing in your business, right? Because they're telling you what they need that maybe you don't have. They're telling you what results they really want or a solution that you might have a portion of a problem for, but not the full problem. Like when we're fully listening, like they're guiding us. So, and again, same thing with your team, all of it, right? When we're present, we're fully present and we're fully listening, we get the gold we get guidance on where to go, right? And it helps us in what to do. So yeah. much gold in that. It, yes, and you see, how I'm good. I'm learning. Yes, you are Thanks so you're, you're a quick learner. <laughs> um, no, you you sparked a, a memory of mine, and just a quick story to illustrate how powerful this is. Just the listening. If you don't listen or if you show that you're not actively listening you can shut down a sales conversation or just any conversation i was yes. actually i was i was a guest on uh, someone else's podcast um months ago i won't i won't say the name of the show but every time he asked a question this was not an improv show he had a list of questions <laughs> um, every time he asked a question he asked it and immediately went over here to his phone and like wasn't paying attention Ooh. and then that like right off the bat just kind of bothers me because I'm like, why, why am I here? Um, but then yeah. the follow up conversation to the podcast, he tried to sell me a $36,000 coaching program. And I was like, you didn't listen to me when we had 15 minutes together. Why in the world would I pay you money to pretend yeah. to listen to me? I know how you're going to show up. Yes. So listening is not just hearing. It's, it's the active, you know, being engaged, paying attention. You can tell when people are, are planning their next statement or response versus actually yeah. like taking in what you're saying. So that one, it's it's always so present for me. I love watching how other people listen and it's a huge improv tip there. Yeah, and I love like what you touched on too is like you, you're gonna get the sale or not get the sale, right? And because what we all want to be seen and be heard. And when you are fully present and listening, 
that's a validation for that person, right? There, it's an unconscious thing that there that creates connection. Yeah, that's really, yeah. really powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. So you dropped two gold nuggets so yes. far. What what else okay. do we got? What else do we got? What else do we got? All right. Another improv principle I learned that I am applying is to be all in. It is seriously so much easier to actually just be a hundred percent in than to be like halfway in or 60% in or where a lot of us get to, we'll get all the way up to like 90% in, right? It's like, I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm most of the way in and uh, I'm going to have a fallback just in case it doesn't work or it fails, right? It's like, we have a contingency plan. I'm not in except for I do have this contingency just in case. It actually takes so much more effort to do that and like plan that and that all that mental energy than to literally just say, I'm all in. I am all in. And it kind of like what it does is it frees you up from having to worry about like whether it works or fails. It doesn't matter because I went all in and we know, right? Whether it works or it fails, we're like the concept of failing forward. It's always working because even when we fail, we're still learning. So being all in and improv on stage if you are holding back or you're hesitant, that is energy that's felt from the audience, right? And it doesn't, a scene won't land the same way versus when you're all in. And it's like having your back, right? Yes, ending your partner. If your partner says something so off the wall that makes no sense, first you're going to yes end the hell out of it and you're going to justify why it makes sense. That's, and then you're going to up level it. You're going to take it to a, a whole new level, which is usually when scenes become really funny. So the essence of improv isn't actually about trying to be funny. It is about an involvement and an evolution and a relationship. And that's how things, when you're like, if this is true, then what? When things start to get really crazy and wild and out there. And it's usually when somebody has an utter fail, like that made no sense at all. And then you're justifying it is when it starts to get really hilarious and entertaining. So that being all in, right? There's confidence that is developed and grown when you're just all in, you're no longer afraid to fail. It's like either way I'm winning because I'm gonna learn from the epic fail or it's gonna work. But either way, one, I'm further ahead in my business or in my process. And I'm learning, which means I'm growing. And when you're in that action and you're just going and being all in, you're growing your confidence and so many other things along the way. So that one is is huge, I think, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's a major one. I just I see it playing out so poorly. I don't know why this image popped in my head. Like you're in an important executive meeting and you're you and your partner are all in and you're on you're both doing yes and and it's like yeah, that's why we call all our customers stupid idiots. <laughs> that's our plan. <laughs> it's just like blowing up, but you're both all in on the same page. So maybe there's not an identical crossover between improv and boardroom, but the principles definitely apply. A hundred percent. Yes, yes. And it, and it really is the concept about going for it. Yeah. Right. And it's where we hold ourselves back or we don't show up. We don't be visible. We don't do the thing because of fear, mm. right? That's where this concept like really translates and to just do the thing. Yeah. Just be all in and do the thing. Be all in. Burn the boats. Yeah. I love it. All right. That's um, right. Burn it down. <laughs> What's number yes. four? Yes. Okay. So the fourth concept is in finding the game. So in improv, there's a lot of games that we play and there's structure to them. And in a scene, what you're doing is you're always looking for these patterns. So you're looking for like what can be repeated, how things in former scenes like connect in. So what you're really doing is you're finding processes and you're finding systems because as an improver, it makes everything so much easier. It's laid out for you. So you don't have to like constantly be creative you're just looking for the little nuggets. You're looking for the scene. You're looking for the game. Now you can create repetition and then you can evolve and up-level that and build on that. So in business, finding the game is like, first, how can we actually gamify what we do? 
because let's be honest, right? That's more motivating. Plus, it's just more fun, right? We're not in this. It's like we, we tend to take things so seriously. And it's not to say that things are not important and that they matter, right? It's not to belittle the importance of things. But what we tend to do is make things very heavy, right? When we feel the load and the responsibility of things, we carry the burden and it weights us down and it all, it takes away the fun. It makes it feel very heavy and burned it, right? But when we, when we bring in the energy and we bring in the fun, it allows us to go for it, right? And when we're looking for these processes and systems, right, in finding this game, in business, it helps us actually create the very foundations that we need to build our business upon. And the more that we build it right, the more efficiencies we create, the more fun we can actually have, right? I know you talk about a lot about like managing your calendar, like the more that you do that, it's not about managing your time, it's actually about managing your calendar. But when you do that, that is structured freedom, right? Then you have the freedom to play, to be more creative. You create more white space to allow your brain to be creative to then like stretch and grow. So finding the game for me is like laying the foundations and creating those efficiencies to allow you to gamify, to step in and to create more fun. Yeah, I love I love that principle. As a matter of fact, the fun in general is one of our core values at What If. It's in the logo. The, yeah. the play or the top of the logo is the play button. We love to play, love we love to play fun because we understand. Yeah. And, and this is when we work with our clients. You can't... You can. It's very difficult to switch from being, actually, you said this yourself, from being two different people, from being the serious boardroom yeah. executive to the fun idea, creative, um, you know, CEO or executive. So it has to be ingrained in what you're doing. I, I absolutely love that principle from improv. Didn't even know it crossed over there. Um, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. I can't even tell you how important it is to just lighten things up. Business should be fun. Like yeah. this, this is, this is fun. We're having fun, but we're doing business all at the same time. And you're learning Absolutely. while you're watching and listening. So I, I love that. Um, we do have to wrap up yeah. pretty soon, but I want to get number five. All in. right. What's, Let's what's do five real you? quick. This is, this is easy. So number five is establishing relationship. This is a no brainer, right? So in improv, the first objective is to establish your relationship with your partner, right? What do they mean to you? How do you feel about them? If you have that foundation, which basically is connection, everything else can grow from that. And where you don't know where to take a scene, you come right back to relationship. So obvious, right, in business, relationship is everything, right? It creates repeat customers, referrals, you know, long-term customers, a better experience for our customers and our clients, which leads to great testimonials, the referrals, all the things. But it all starts with relationship. Right. And, and that foundation gets so reinforced that that is it's kind of like a no brainer. Right. In business, like relationship really, really is everything. Um, and I love that establishment and that relation of it on stage. Like it is the first thing you do. And if you don't have relationship, you don't have a good scene. If you don't have good relationships, what are you doing in your business? Yeah. And well, let's illustrate this in real time. Um, I gave you the example of that podcast and I can already tell that you do this just as part of your normal being in business, because you mentioned the content that I put out that we have not talked about. So I know you did your homework and you went and watched my content. I feel sure seen, I feel heard. I feel super important too. At the same time, I feel great. You Thank have you. a better likelihood of selling me a $36,000 coaching program after this podcast than that guy did. And he featured me on his show. So the importance of relationships cannot be understated and how you show up and interact with people. I, I love that tip. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is the magic. This is how yeah. it gets done. All right. We got to wrap you. up. This has been too much fun of an episode. Lori, I'm going to put your, um, your website on the screen here. Tell me or tell the people listening, where can we learn more about you? Find what you got going on, follow you on social media. What do you have for us? Yeah, absolutely. We can go to my website. So the place I live, I, I love to live on LinkedIn. So you can find me there. It's my name, you know, Lori Scheibel. You can look me up. Would love to connect there and, and really connect and talk. Um, I also am on Instagram under Lori Scheibel Coaching. And you can also find me on my personal page on Facebook. 
which is Lori Alphabet Scheibel. So Lori Alphabet Scheibel, maiden name Presbolinsky, hence the nickname Alphabet, Lori Alphabet uh, Scheibel. <laughs> yep, so we'd love to hang, we'd love to connect with everyone. That's so awesome. Thank you for that. All of that will be in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening. Remember to subscribe, put your takeaways in the comments. We want to know what you think. Have you tried improv? Are you going to try improv? I don't know if I am. I don't know if I'm bold enough, but I love the principles. I love how all of this translates yeah. over to business. And it, it obviously ties to the harmonious architecture. We already talked about the I and the H, inspire and home along with several other disciplines that we don't have time to go into. But I love this conversation. It is so important for your leadership to be optimized. Use these principles. Try them out. Just from this short little episode, try to bring it into your leadership style. See if you can inspire and connect with your team a little bit more and get a better result. I promise you, you will. These are foundational principles to life, not just improv and business. So try them out and join us next time on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for watching. We'll see you there.